welcome again to this particular session and in this one we are going to actually start interbranch transaction this is the seventh section what exactly interbranch adjustments in order to comprehend interbranch adjustment let me actually make you understand with the help of a particular example let us say mr a in the current week correct these are weekly transaction of Mr. A. I'm trying to tell you what is the theme of actually interbranch adjustment. Let us say during the current week, what Mr. A did, he purchased, let us say goods, purchased goods from Mr. B. Let us say on Monday, he purchased goods from Mr. B worth rupees 1 lakh. On Monday. And on Wednesday, he sold goods to Mr. B. Mr. A sold goods to Mr. B. Let us say he sold the goods worth rupees 3 lakh to Mr. B. Similarly, let us say on Wednesday, he again purchased goods from Mr. B worth rupees 2 lakh. Then again, on Thursday, he purchased goods from Mr. B worth rupees 1 lakh. And let us say on Friday, he again sold goods to Mr. B for rupees 2 lakh. And then on Saturday, he sold goods to Mr. B let us say worth rupees 1 lakh. Because Mr. A has sales of rupees 6 lakh, that means Mr. A is supposed to receive 6 lakh from Mr. B. But at the same time, he has some purchases from Mr. B. That is 4 lakh. So instead of settling the transaction separately, sometimes the businessmen, they agree that after a particular period, which may be late, which may be or could be a week, a month, or a particular specified period, three months, four months, correct? So they mutually actually agree upon that we shall settle the transaction on net basis. Now, in this case, Mr. A is supposed to receive six lakh and supposed to pay four lakh. So what simply Mr. A will do, he will ask Mr. B to pay rupees two lakh. So this transaction is settled on net basis. It is a better way rather than what we call settling the transaction separately on each day, isn't it? Then it will become very complicated for both these businessmen. So that is the point here. Similarly, sometimes what happens, there are several transactions between or among the branches. So instead of settling the transaction on a particular date, it is always better to settle the inter-branch transactions at the end of a particular accounting period. That is what we mean by inter-branch adjustments, correct? Inter-branch adjustments means whatever transactions have taken place between the or among the branches, instead of settling them separately, we shall settle them at a particular day. Generally, it happens, happens to be the reporting date. Is it clear to you or not? So, in this question, now 7.1 as I am talking about, there are actually four branches, correct? One is Delhi branch, another one is Mumbai branch, then we have Chennai branch, and finally we have a Kolkata branch. You have been given transactions of Delhi branch, you have been given transactions of Mumbai branch, of Chennai branch, and of course of Kolkata branch. Now, you will have to note these transactions very carefully, of course, for, for instance, in case of Delhi branch, it is clearly written that received goods from Mumbai, 35,000 and 15,000. So this time, Delhi is receiving some goods worth rupees 50,000. But these 50,000 worth of goods, which is which are being received from by Delhi, actually 35,000 is from Mumbai and 15,000 from Kolkata. So... <clears throat> Delhi branch is receiving, but at the same time, from the perspective of the Mumbai and Kolkata, they are actually giving. 
Delhi branch is the receiving branch while other branches are giver branch. Is it clear to you? You have to take care of these things. Similarly, Delhi branch sent goods to Chennai 25,000 and 20,000 that is total 45,000 worth of goods have been sent. Similarly, bills receivable received from Chennai. Delhi branch received 20,000 worth of bills receivable. This will be considered as bills payable for the Chennai branch and so on. Similarly, acceptances sent 25,000 to Mumbai and 10,000 to Kolkata. Total 35,000 worth of acceptances. So, this time from the perspective of the Mumbai branch, 25,000 will be considered as bills receivable. From the perspective of the Kolkata branch, 10,000 will be considered as bills receivable. However, total 35,000 will be considered as bills payable from the perspective of the Delhi branch. So, in order to solve such questions, what I am supposed to do, because I need, I would need a little bit of a space in this case, so I will have to create the space for me, correct? And now I will solve this question. In order to solve this question, this is section 6, section 7, sorry. This is your section 7. I will write here section 7. And section 7 basically is known as interbranch adjustments. Interbranch adjustments. Interbranch adjustments. Interbranch adjustments, whatever transactions have taken between or among the branches, we will have to adjust those, correct? This is the theme of this particular chapter. Now, in order to solve it, what I am going to do, first of all, I am going to write here details because lots of transactions are there. Details. First, I will write details, correct? Then I will write here, first branch is Mumbai branch. I will write here, sorry, first one is Delhi branch. So, I am going to write here Delhi branch, Delhi branch. Similarly, I will write here Mumbai branch. Then I will write Chennai branch. Chennai branch. Question is not tough. Concept is also not tough. Only thing is that we have to exercise utmost care and caution when we solve the question because otherwise confusion may arise. We have to take care of this particular fact that which branch is receiving and which branch is giving. This is, this is the only concept which we have to apply here in this particular case. Now, as far as details are given, as far as details are concerned, first I will write here A, Delhi. That means, first of all, I am considering the transactions of Delhi branch. As far as Delhi branch is concerned, as far as Delhi branch is concerned, transactions are very simple and straight. The first transaction states that you need not require to write the entire transaction. And before we move further, let me also tell you when I am when I am writing here Delhi, in respect of every branch, I will have to create two columns, debit and credit. Similarly, in case of Mumbai, debit and credit. Similarly, in case of Chennai, debit and credit. And similarly, in case of Kolkata, debit and credit. I will have to create two columns, correct? Now, as I told you, Delhi branch has received goods 35,000 and 15,000. That means Delhi branch is receiving 50,000 worth of goods. Because Delhi branch is receiving, what I am going to do, I am simply going to write 50,000. The impact of transaction 1 is that Delhi branch is receiving branch. But at the same time, out of 50,000, 35,000 worth of goods have been supplied by Mumbai branch. So, towards the credit side of the Mumbai branch, I will write here 35,000. This is important to note towards the credit side. Similarly, 15,000 worth of goods have been received from Kolkata branch. So, uh, towards the credit side of the Kolkata branch, I will write 15,000 and so on. You are going to incorporate the transaction on the basis of such logic. Is it clear to you or not? 
Now similar, similarly, the next transaction is sent goods to Chennai 25 and 20. Total 45,000 worth of goods this time have been sent. Sent means supplied by Delhi head office. So Delhi head office is sender of the goods. As far as second transaction of Delhi is concerned, now Delhi is sending the goods worth rupees 45,000. So towards the credit side of the Delhi branch, I will write here 45,000. Out of this 45,000, 20,000 worth of goods have been received by Kolkata. So on the debit of Kolkata, I will write 20,000. In fact, I will write 25,000 because Kolkata is, Chennai is receiving 25,000 worth of goods and Kolkata is receiving 20,000 worth of goods. I will write here 20,000 towards the debit side. And Chennai branch is receiving 25,000 worth of goods. So towards the debit side, I will write 25 and so on. This is how you have to keep on incorporating the transaction. Now I will go for the third transaction. As far as third transaction is concerned, simple transaction. Delhi branch received a bills receivable of 20,000. So Delhi branch is the receiver. I will put it towards the debit column. And we are receiving it from Chennai branch. So I will move to Chennai branch. This is Chennai branch. Chennai branch is, is actually paired this time. And uh, I will write here 20,000. Amount is 20,000 on the credit side because Chennai branch is sending this bill to us. Third transaction is over. Acceptances. Fourth. 25 plus 10, 35,000 worth of acceptances this time sent by Delhi branch. So I will write in the credit column 35,000. This is bills payable for us, but this will be considered as bills receivable for Mumbai. So, I will move into the column of the deb, uh, into the debit side, and I will write here twenty five thousand because out of acceptances of thirty five thousand, twenty five thousand were in favor of Mumbai. That means from the perspective of the Mumbai, these are bills receivable. Similarly, Kolkata is receiving ten thousand worth of bills. On the debit side, I will write here ten thousand. Is it clear to you? Now, similarly, I will take the transactions of B. Next one is Mumbai branch. So I will write here Mumbai. Mumbai branch. As far as Mumbai branch is concerned, only two transactions have been given to us. However, I will write transaction 5. Logically, this is the first transaction of Mumbai branch. Receives goods from Kolkata 15 and from Delhi 20,000. Mumbai branch is receiving the goods total 15 plus 20. That means 35,000 worth of goods have been received by Mumbai branch. So, I will write here 35,000 on the debit side of the Mumbai branch. 35,000. Mumbai branch is receiving 35,000 worth of what we call goods. And... Uh, out of these 35,000 worth of goods, uh, Delhi has sent 20,000 worth of goods because Mumbai branch received 20,000 from Delhi. So that means Delhi is the supplier. I will write on the credit side. Similarly, 15,000 worth of goods have been supplied by Kolkata. So on the credit side of Kolkata, I am going to write again 15,000. Is it clear to you or not? This is how you have to move. Next one is cash sent to Delhi. That means Mumbai branch is sending the cash. Mumbai branch is sending the cash 15,000 to Delhi and 7,000 to Kolkata. Total 25,000 worth of cash. So I will move into the column of Mumbai branch first. And on the credit side, I will write 22,000 because Mumbai branch is the sender branch. Out of 22,000, 15,000 worth of cash is received by Delhi branch. So I, on the debit side of Delhi, I will write 15,000. And 7,000 worth of cash is received by Kolkata branch. So on the debit of Kolkata branch, I will write 7,000. So as far as Mumbai branch is concerned, transactions are over. Now we move over to Chennai branch. As far as Chennai branch is concerned, transaction number 7th, which happens to be the first transaction of Chennai, 
receives goods from Kolkata. Chennai branch received goods from Kolkata. So on the debit side of the Chennai branch, I will write 30,000. And on the credit side of the Kolkata, I will write 30,000. That's all. Easy transaction. Transaction number 8. Acceptances and cash. That means bills payable and cash sent to Kolkata. Chennai branch has sent in total 20 plus 10, 30,000. So I will move into the column of Chennai branch. And Chennai branch is this time sending 20,000 worth of acceptances and 10,000 worth of cash. So total 30,000 worth of worth of bills payable and cash sent by Chennai branch. So I will put it towards the credit side of the Chennai branch. However, Kolkata branch is the receiver branch. On the debit of Kolkata, I will write 30,000. Is it clear to you or not? <clears throat> then we have finally Kolkata branch. Kolkata branch. As far as Kolkata branch is concerned, Kolkata branch, there are three transactions sent goods to Chennai. Kolkata branch is sending the goods to the Chennai branch. Kolkata and Chennai. Transaction number 9. 9, 10 and 11. It is very difficult to present it. Anyway, send goods to Chennai. Mumbai is not involved. Delhi is not involved at all. Mumbai is also not involved. Now we come to the main point. Kolkata branch is sending goods to Chennai. That means Chennai will receive the goods 35,000. So on the debit side of the Chennai, I will write 35,000. And towards the credit side of the Kolkata, I will write 35,000 because Kolkata branch is sending the goods. Then paid cash to Chennai. Paid cash to Chennai. Once again, Chennai branch will receive I will write here 15,000 and once again Kolkata branch will get credit because they are sending the cash. Acceptances sent to Chennai. Chennai branch is receiving 15,000 worth of acceptances so these are bills receivable for Chennai and once again 15,000 will appear towards the credit side of Kolkata branch. Now we have finished up all the transactions. After having finished up all the transaction, what you are supposed to do now? First, I will take the Delhi branch, correct? First two columns are related to Delhi branch. Now, I will total them up. If I will total them up, I will total up both the sides. Credit side total is 1 lakh. Debit side total is 85,000. Debit side total is 85,000. Is it clear to you or not? Similarly, I will now tally Mumbai branch account. If you will tally the Mumbai branch account, you will find that debit side total is more 60,000 and credit side total is 57,000. 57,000. See, this is Mumbai branch. Debit side total is 60,000. Credit side total is 57,000. Similarly, now I will tally Chennai branch. The debit side total is equal to 1 lakh 20,000. 1 lakh 20,000. And credit side total will be equal to 50,000. And similarly, now you are going to tally Kolkata branch. The debit side total of Kolkata branch is 67,000. While credit side total is equal to 1 lakh 25,000. Once you have totaled, now what you are going to Right here, see here. Now you will take the balancing figure because credit side is more than debit side in as far as Delhi is concerned. I will write balancing figure here. However, this balancing figure will be known as credit balance. It will be known as credit balance because credit side is bigger than debit side. 
Similarly, I will tell you now here, in case of Mumbai, there is balance which is appearing towards the credit side because debit side is more. This 3000 balance will be termed as debit balance. Is it clear to you? Similarly, as far as Chennai is concerned, the balancing figure is towards the credit side, but it will be termed as debit balance because debit side is more. And in case of Kolkata, we find 58,000 balancing figure coming towards the debit side because it means credit side is more. So this will be known as credit balance. Once you are done up with the balancing, now all you have to do is to pass an adjustment entry. And what will be your adjustment entry? Adjustment entry will be very simple. Adjustment entry at the end of the reporting period or the particular period, you are going to pass the adjustment entry. What will be your adjustment entry? See, in case of Delhi, Delhi is getting credited. So you will credit the Delhi branch. Delhi branch account. In the entry, you will credit the Delhi branch account by 15,000 because it is having a credit balance. That means Delhi branch is supposed to receive 15. Similarly, you find that Mumbai branch, these two columns are related to Mumbai branch and Mumbai branch is having what we call debit balance. So you will debit Mumbai branch. Mumbai branch will be debited. Mumbai branch account debit. And Mumbai branch account will be debited by rupees 3000. Correct? Similarly, in case of Chennai, we find there is debit balance of 70,000. So I will write Chennai branch account. Chennai branch account. As far as Chennai branch is concerned, once again, you will see there is debit balance of 70,000. However, in case of Kolkata, there is credit balance. So you will write here to Kolkata. That is equal to 58,000. Now, obviously, the credit and debit total should match. If I will add these two total, it will be equal to 73. It will also be equal to 73. So, that being, as far as net transactions are concerned, ultimately, Kolkata and Delhi branch should receive 58 and 15, while Mumbai branch and Chennai branch will be debited by 3,000 and 70,000. That means, this 73,000, which these branches will receive, Mumbai will contribute 3,000 and Chennai will contribute 70,000. This is what we mean by branch adjustment. It's a simple topic, correct? Now, so this was your as far as branch account is concerned, till up to this particular point, uh, we have finished up nearly whole chapter. So, uh, and we have done each and every section with great in-depthness, lots of insights, and I hope that you would agree with me. And so many questions we have done, I think near about 100 questions we must have had done by this particular time. Isn't it or not? So, Uh, after this, I have given another section. In your notes, you will find that there are MCQs also. Since you have finished all the what we call questions, and we have completed each and every question of the module also, and of the latest examination also, you need not require to hunt for any other material. But you must also try to you must also try to actually attempt MCQ section which is given to you. So. Uh, with that, we come to the end of this. So this is all about, in fact, branch accounts. And in the next session, when I will beat you, I will meet you with something else. So till then, it's goodbye.